Hey guys, this is Eden, and for this video, what we'll be doing is actually implementing the part of the training for our network. So first off, on the last video, I know there were some audio issues. Tell me how those are this time. I'm trying a different mic, um, but on to actually what we're doing. So we'll be working on, like I said, actually getting the network to work and training the network. Specifically, we'll be doing gradient descent today and partially updating our weights so that when we feed data through our network, we actually get um, a working result. Cool, so let's get to that. So first off, we're going to actually define a function for training called train. Um, it will take in an input, an output, and then two different types of weights. Uh, we need our input and our weights just like we did for our in in forward, right? So because we need to forward propagate all our stuff again, except for now we're forward propagating it and then we're also checking it. So I'm going to actually copy everything in, in, in forward. I'm not going to just use the method. I'm going to actually copy it down. And the reason for that is that I'm actually going to need to edit some stuff so that we can access certain layers before they've had the activation function before they've had the activation function applied and also after they've had the activation function applied separately. Because before, when we were, for example, applying the activation function to layer 2, we were just doing it over the layer 2 before that and overriding it. We're also going to need to reshape our Y. We probably don't need to, but just to make sure that it's in the right format, we're going to get O ahead and reshape it just as sort of a backup. Cool. So I'm going to call the activation layers, layers that have been passed to an activation function, a underscore the name of that layer. So we'll have a underscore layer two and a out. So with that, let's actually get into the theory of this and how a neural network works before we get too deep into the code. So I went kind of over this in my first video, but now we'll actually be going more into the math. So we'll have W1 and W2, which are first and second sets of weights. And what we want to do is we want to calculate the actual, how much we need to change weight to to start out. So we have our loss, which is our actual data minus what our prediction is, right? So our loss is the same as error. It's how far off we were. And what we want to do is we want to find the gradient of this. And what do I mean by gradient? So our loss is probably going to be um, quadratic because we're squaring it. So if we look at this graph right here, you can see if this is like a graph of our loss, we want to be at that bottom right there, the zero loss or 100% accurate. Although we are currently at the we are here mark, which is quite a bit of loss. So if I kind of draw out a blue function matching the blue line, our function might look a little something like this if it's a quadratic equation. And if we're at the two on X, we you see our loss would be five. So what we want to do is take the derivative of that in green, and you can see our delta loss is four. So this this isn't this is kind of an idea of if we now subtract that four because we want to go towards zero loss, right? We want to go down on the slope. We're trying to find the bottom of the slope. What we do is we subtract that delta loss from our weight, and you can see now if we subtract four, we're much closer, or something like four, we're much closer to that point at zero. So what we do is just reiterating that we find the delta loss and how much we want to change our weights and then we subtract that from our actual weights to get closer to zero loss or 100% accuracy. Cool. So before we do this, just a little background, you'll definitely want to know the chain rule. If you've never done any calculus before, I recommend you skip this part because it might just confuse you. But the chain rule basically says if we're taking the derivative of a function in a function, so right here f is our outer function and g of u is our inner function, well, we take the derivative of the outer function and then multiply that by the derivative of the inner function and while leaving the inner function the same when we're taking the derivative of the outer function. You should already know the chain rule. This should hopefully be just a reminder of how it works. If it isn't, you might want to go back and review that. So we're going to do L2 loss or loss squared. So our prediction is I'm writing as Y hat and our actual data is Y. So what we want to do is square that and one half. And then we want to find the partial derivative, like I mentioned earlier, with respect to the second set of weights. 
So derivative, we just bring that two exponent down, multiply it by the rest of everything, and I'm gonna write out the y minus y hat. That's the same thing, that's our guess, right? So I'm gonna rewrite y hat, which is our guess, as the sigmoid of the hidden layer times our second set of weights, which is what it was originally. And then we're gonna multiply that, this is the chain rule, we're gonna multiply that by the function that's inside the parentheses. So I left out the y minus right there, and the reason I did that is because it's a constant and it will end up getting canceled out either way because we're taking the derivative of it, and the derivative of a constant is zero. So I almost got that minus there. Let's make sure we have that in. So you can see how we're just taking the inside of that function and taking the derivative of it and multiplying it by itself to use the chain rule and make sure we got all our stuff right. Awesome, so this is kind of the first layer of actually doing the math. The two and the one half there cancel out, and what we end up getting is y minus y hat. So I'm just rewriting again. I'm just switching between y hat and the sigmoid of h times w2, but they're the same thing. Um, I just switched back to y hat because it's a little quicker to write. Then we want to multiply that by what we had before. And when I say sig p, I mean sigmoid prime or the derivative of the prime function. So once we take the, and this is just the, so where we have, and you can see the blue and the blue, they're both color code, the blue and the blue, um, the sigmoid, the derivative of the sigmoid is just sigmoid prime. So instead of writing the whole thing out, I'm just writing sig p, and that's the sigmoid prime of h times w2, just like we had right above that. We're just copying it down a little bit differently. And then we need to use the chain rule again, actually, and multiply that by what is inside the sigmoid prime, so the h times w2, the derivative of that. So this is just another application of the chain rule, and we just keep and keep going with it. If we write that back out, uh, h times w2, h is a constant, and w2 is a, we're deriving with respect to w2, so that cancels out when we're left with just h. So just here we can kind of derive a sort of equation that actually works for now getting our gradient and getting the gradient that we can apply to the weights. So it's the air times the delta air times the previous layer. So we just subtract that from the weights and now we successfully updated our second pair of weights so that they will be good to go next time we run through our neural network or they'll be closer, hopefully have less loss now. So what if we wanna update our first pair of weights now? So that's a little bit more difficult because Whereas we had y for w2, right, the actual data, we don't have anything to compare the hidden layer with. We don't know what it should be. So we actually solved this with back propagation, which we'll get into in the next video. Uh, it's a bit more math, so I'll leave that for then. For now, let's get back to the code and actually code up this gradient descent. Awesome, so now that we're back in the code, the first thing we wanna calculate is the actual loss of the function. So that's gonna be the L2 loss, which is just one half times the amount of error and squaring that. Now for when we're using matrices or, sorry, not matrices, but multiple inputs at once, we'll wanna make sure we take account of that and add up all of our error. So we probably won't be doing that with this model, but it's just to be safe. So next up, what we wanna do is we wanna use this equation that we came up with earlier when we were drawing it out, and this is just part of the equation for the delta weights. This is the first part, it has everything except for the times h at the end, and we'll just call this delta loss, and it will be the first part of that. And the reason we're doing it separately and we're not multiplying that h at the end is because later, when we're doing back propagation in the next episode, we'll actually need this delta loss without that. And then lastly, to get the actual delta weights, we multiply that by the hidden layer. Make sure you multiply it in the same order as I do. The order you multiply this in actually does matter. And you might also notice that I'm putting a dot T there. That T stands for transform, and it basically means that if I have a matrix, I'm putting a line through it from the top left corner to the bottom right corner, and I'm flipping it over that line. The reason we're doing that is just so that it will be in the right format to multiply it. So if I use this kind of example right here, the three, two, sorry, one, two, three, and four, 
Well, if I was to take the transpose of this, we just switch the two and the four and the one, sorry, the two and the three and the one and the four stay the same because they're on that diagonal line. So we're just reflecting it over a line to make sure it's in the right format. And then we multiply that by our delta loss. So that's the last part of our equation, multiplying by the hidden layer. And that sums it up for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and definitely tune in for next episode where we go over back propagation and actually finish up this network and get it running. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed and you want to keep up with the videos, definitely hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.